<laughs> no voice, no voice except Faisal is not. Welcome guys, November has so day number two. And today we're going to do a podcast. Faisal is going to ask me a couple of questions. And I think what he has to say is very interesting because it's very motivating for every young person, every young entrepreneur who wants, who wants to start with sales or whatever direction is in his life. It's going to be very interesting. <laughs> Exactly, guys. Welcome also from my side, uh, Faisal here. And uh, yeah, November Hustle, day two. We have some very interesting questions. Uh, we did a poll just a couple of minutes ago. And um, yeah, Diane, let's uh, jump straight into it. Nice. Very cool. So I just wanted to start with this question uh, because you're a very good salesman. Well, mm. I would say from my perspective, right? Because I've never sold, to be honest, I never sold with my words. I never could speak about anything about my product. I don't know why that, but it's kind of hard. I think I think I'm bothering the people when I'm calling nonstop and I look at this, look at this. I'm trying to be better at it, but it's pretty much very hard for me. So I wanted to ask you the first question. How many calls did you need at first to make your first sale? Mm. Okay. To answer this question, just uh, straightforward. Um, I made my s first sale in my agency like two no three and a half weeks in pretty much and i was cold calling 150 businesses per day and uh, yeah you can calculate so it's like 750 calls per uh, week time three uh, was like maybe like 2500 cold calls until the first sale and what did you sold actually and what were the customers that you were calling which companies uh, so my company is specialized on employee recruitment. So in Germany, uh, there, there's a huge problem in the economy. There are a lot of businesses uh, can have a shortage in good people to work for them. And uh, they, most of them, they don't use the modern methods and they still um, put a lot of effort in a kind of old ways like newspapers and this kind of bullshit. And yeah, we basically help them to find uh, their people through social media nice super cool and what was the um what was your what is your what do you actually do in that how do you help them what what is what do you offer <clears throat> so so the entry offer is uh, a three months uh, working period so our aim obviously is to work 12 months with all the companies um but the entry offer is three months for uh, either two or three k per month depends if we use a video for our advertisement and after a very deep analysis of the employer and the region, um, we create a marketing strategy where we bring the company culture into social media, basically, and where we uh, display some uh, ads, basically ads on Instagram, Meta, um, Meta Instagram, t um, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, depends on the position. Um, and yeah, people see the ad, they click on it, uh, they get kind of sold on the copywriting, on the picture, on the video, uh, and then they opt in and we have the lead and this lead we just sell to the company. Pretty cool. So I want to get a little bit back because you said you did like 2,500 calls until you got your first sale. Mm. Uh, and for most of the people, that, that feels like somehow amazing. Imagine like doing... 2,500 cows and nothing happens and suddenly you did one close because because when you think about it um, 90% do like 5 to 10 cows mm. and then just stop and they say it's not working what do you have to say to them and what, what's the difference in you what what, what did what did motivated you and how did you know that you're going to do the cow how, how do you know that you can close the person after 2,500 cows so obviously I would have loved to close someone after the first call, but this is obviously not in your hand. Um, what's in your hand is how many people you call and obviously giving up is not an option, was never an option for me. Um, and uh, yeah, in the end, pushing through and realizing that you actually get better from call to call is already something which is pretty satisfying in my opinion. And on the other hand, um, it, you never know when it's going to happen, but you know it's possible. Why it's possible? Because other, other people did it before. I mean, um, kind of similar when, I mean, we're going to talk about your um, story and your um, whole path as well, even though it's well documented in the other YouTube videos. Definitely check out uh, the full story of Diane. Thank you. And 
Yeah, so, so basically I knew there are people outside selling the same service as I do and they are making sales. So it is working. The big question, how can I make it work for me? And it was just a matter of time until I get better because obviously you need to get good in your own skill. And once you get better in your own skill, then people will believe in you and what you say and then eventually buy from you. Nice. All right. Then how did you, so you said you already knew people that uh, had the same business as you have. Yeah. Were they close people and did they help you cra uh, craft the whole <coughs> offer that you're going to sell after that? Um, that's a good question. So after I broke, um, broke out, yeah. dropped out, dropped yeah. out from uni. Why, why did you <coughs> drop out from the uni? Okay. That's a different story. So I came, um, I, I was, tra I was, um, how do you say <clears throat> in a school, not a university, um, gap, not gap year. So it was like a year abroad from yeah. a university and I came back after I had just some insane um, run in the crypto space and I thought I <clears throat> don't have to work anymore, at least not for money, but after losing everything, um, I had to kind of get back to something and I couldn't wait until my uni finishes to find a job and I was pretty devastated with the idea to work for someone after um, actually had a good amount and then losing everything, obviously. Um, and yeah, so I needed to learn how to do it. And obviously you always have to pay either through time or you pay someone to teach you how they did it. Yeah. And this is basically what I did. Okay. Exactly. What was the, uh, the other question again? <laughs> I got lost a little bit. Yeah. So, so my main question was how, who helped you craft the offer? Okay. And how, was you, how were you so sure that it's going to sell after the 2,500 calls? And also, yeah. did, you, did, you, did you try to recreate after each call or like try to uh, optimize your sales offer to get to that close call? Or it was always the same for the 2,500 <clears throat> calls? Oh. Yeah, so, so for the first question, I um, paid someone to teach me. So I actually booked a coaching, which was pretty, uh, a lot of money for myself in the was, beginning. Was it like one-on-one -on -one mentoring or was it a company? No, no, it was like a group coaching with a video course, pretty basic. Yeah. Um, but it was awesome from the um, knowledge gap, which got filled straight away. Um, and through this coaching, I kind of uh, had an idea how to, uh, craft something which which is in need and obviously if you want something from the market which is money then you need the something uh, you need to give the market something yeah and a huge bottleneck a huge pain in the german market is obviously what i said this whole um employee game so businesses that are looking desperately for people and i knew if i can help them to get those people then i can charge them a fair amount of money um and this is basically uh, the offer i help you um, by finding those people through making advertisement for your company. Yeah, and what was exactly the, uh, the first amount that you closed the person for? So the first amount, of course, was like 4.5K. 4.5K, yeah. for how much of uh, time period was it? Uh, after um, three and a half weeks, yeah. Uh, three and a half weeks, but I mean, how much uh, was the contract for with the company? Ah, was the it, com like, it was like uh, three months, yeah. Three, three months, like mm -hmm. one and a half thousand, something like one and a half thousand. Yeah, kind of like that, month. yeah. Cool. And how much do you close people now, right now, per month? Or is it differently? Uh, yeah, so now um, almost uh, two, uh, yeah, not almost, but like two years later, um, we just had actually a record month last month, October, where we closed like 250K. Crazy. Um, with actually a pretty small team as well. So bef before, before the, before the, you said so far you you did 750K in the, in this year, right? Yeah. And, and until October was like 500K and then plus October it's 750, right? Exactly. Yeah. Nice. Um, I mean, obviously with sales is more you put in, more you get. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, especially um, before October, we were hustling a lot with our Go Viral project and it was uh, kind of very time consuming, but uh, um, also very fun. And uh, there's also something big incoming, obviously, in the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, in October, um, I made also some very good hiring decisions and this kind of uh, um, led to an awesome um, yeah, month of closing volume. Cool, very strong, very strong. Yeah. Great. And how, 
just one last question about your company which mm -hmm. is very interesting i know you're a big dreamer i know you want to success more than anybody and you're probably very motivating when you're when you're surrounded with people like you as well in the room but well, how do you see how do you see several rocks uh like this year you did like 700 uh, 750,000 so far. Mm -hmm. I guess you're aiming for the 1 million, hopefully. Yeah. Seven figures, definitely. But how do you see it in one year from now on? Um, yeah, so basically, revenue is one point, which is al always nice to uh, measure yourself in. Um, but I started to look on my bottom line. So what is actually... Um, what, what am I getting uh, on profit from my company? And w how is the company structured for the big upcoming scale, especially if you're a service provider, um, certain things need to be set before you onboard more clients because nothing is more um, drama than um, taking money from someone and uh, yeah, kind of um, promising him an outcome, but this outcome um, might even happen, but the, um, the service and the customer support and everything is not as good because you're like, you have a lack of people by yourself or a lack of time for yourself. So literally the last six months, we didn't do sales at all, but due yeah. to our amazing product nowadays, it developed pretty good. But where did we go now? I, I asked the question. On, like uh, in a year, in a year, yeah. yeah. So in, in a year, it will be definitely on a different level. So do you want to ask uh, in employee-wise or revenue-wise? Everything. What is the main goal of the company? Of course, revenue definitely yeah. is one of the main goals. But how do you how do you see employment? Uh, what 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 will be the extras that uh, Several Rocks will offer? What is the mm -hmm. main thing after that? You're doing. You have a uh, you have a basic level right now yeah. on what you do, right? Yeah. What, what do you want to add to it to to increase it to make it better as well for the employment yeah. employees? And I, I mean, this actually needs like a whole. Um, episode itself. for itself for sure <laughs> because H it. yeah HR is something very complicated yeah. and something um, yeah a lot of companies don't put much effort in yeah, it because yeah. it doesn't pay you straight away yeah um, even though it's all about people of course and the main idea is to actually develop this perfect product where it's not only about recruitment but also about employee retention yeah so that people will stay with you and we have an amazing offer uh, where people um, yeah, are happy and um, stay with it and actually continue working with us. And this is uh, the plan. We have some amazing case studies um, um, lined up. Um, we're going to prepare now and then we're going to smash uh, the marketing button and uh, uh, create this insane lead flow and uh, how scale. Much, how much percentage is mar marketing for the, whole, for the whole business strategy? How much percentage the marketing? So, so, so literally right now, I didn't spend a single euro on marketing. Yeah. Uh, I just built the system and everything. And next year, it will be like a full on, um, definitely a high to mid six, I mean, mid six figure amount in marketing for sure. That's true. Or I'm aiming at Very least strong. like a ROAS of like, yeah, four to six X. Yeah. What can I tell you for myself? Because I come from Bulgaria, right? And we... I don't know, but you don't really see that much of a companies which work like that. And it's very hard to believe also when you, I remember when you first told me that you closed like uh, a person for 40, 50 K or whatever. I don't, uh, I don't remember the exact amount, but it's very hard to believe for people from like where, where when you come from nothing, right? It's very hard to believe that you can earn that much amount of money for doing stuff like that, right? But of course, uh, everywhere is different. People are different. And as, as long as you continue climbing the ladder, you can get to know more people. You get to know different business, yeah. uh, uh, different businesses that, uh, to say or how to say. It. I don't know. And but I'm definitely very happy that you that you made it that you make it work it. And yeah, I mean, as I said, it's, it's it's the beginning. And for me, even though it's it's uh, it was hard to believe a couple of uh, months ago or a couple of years ago that you can make like a uh, yearly income with what like one client, basically. But if you provide the value, then the amount you write down in the invoice is just a number in the end. And um, yeah, you have to det detach yourself from this number and actually see the value you're providing. And this value is priced and they are perceived with a certain pricing and yeah the market basically um also rewards you for your um and what you do put when in. when did you decide it actually that you're going to do sales or not necessary sales when did you decide that you want to you want everything in life when did you decide that you want to do something big or you wanted a nice life what was this when did you make this decision 
then you want to work towards something to work toward a goal uh, look i mean we met each other in the hospitality area you know? <laughs> yeah and uh, <laughs> i was a waiter <laughs> yeah i mean i was a waiter as well and that's where we met i mean i was doing it as a student and um and yeah people who work hard people who are in hospitality usually they dream big and they are willing to actually put we, more hours and do more right we can we can <laughs> we can el el evaluate on this one but i don't think uh that's the point in this one from my perspective i would say uh it's very hard when once when you come into hospitality and just as a normal waiter mm. it's very hard to go out of there because you have your own position right you have your people you get a you get a drink after every work day you have this comfortable comfortable space that you're in right and at one okay. point when you continue doing this when you continue doing this with all of your buddies and the hospitality you just you just stop there and and you say oh i cannot do anything else that's that's my that's my point and also one other okay. thing which is which is very very uh hard for the hospitality because that's probably the highest paid un non-educational job when you start doing something from n no skill especially right? with tip and everything. especially with tip yeah, yeah right when when i was in zurich when i was in zurich in switzerland i was earning as a waiter like over like five figures like ten thousand ten thousand dollars at least a month which is crazy for i never i never studied for anything i just go there uh became waiter bam ten thousand dollars and yeah. that's that's the comfortable space that you're in and when you think about it with no skills nothing to jump in and do something else you will never earn ten thousand a month yeah the, the, to be honest i never saw hospitality as a way to earn money yeah. i saw it more as a uh, as a training space yeah. to actually get along with people and actually to learn what hard work really is yeah. obviously you have the fun part in between and obviously if you get some good tip end of the night it's also amazing but you asked me like when did you um realize that you wanted more that you wanted to develop and everything yeah. and to be honest it was always inside me yeah. like from the beginning and since i was thinking um, but I knew time will come and obviously you need have to be patient. Definitely. And the plan was never to get rich quick because people get sold on this shit too easily. Yeah. And everything what comes... I did. You know, <laughs> a couple of times. <laughs> everything what comes easy is not valuable, you know? I yeah. mean, imagine everyone has a six-pack. You know, six-pack six is not yeah, uh, just like nothing special. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, for, well, for bas example, true. Basically, yeah. Also with content creation, like that what we do in Go Viral, right? Um, people think that they're gonna come in a group. Uh, we're gonna give them all the information. Do five videos, bam, you're viral. Yeah. Hard work is always appreciated. Hard work is always appreciated. And if and if you don't got any success or any, um, I don't know. How do you any success or any? I mean, it's all about the input for sure. I mean, yeah. It's kind of. Uh, uh, what do you want to say i think and um yeah all in all if you want something in life you are happily ready to sacrifice for it right i mean once you found your stuff was jumping around everything else was was nothing compared to it right i swear i swear nothing i i i really found <laughs> my my doing as you, as you know everything is going pretty well so far also at my company and everything and I was just ready to sacrifice absolutely everything. Exactly. And I mean, for myself, you know, I started as Apart a nerd. from my family, sorry. Obviously, <laughs> family is number one, for sure. Um, but, you know, I mean, I told you, I started as a, as a gamer. I was the biggest nerd you can uh, imagine, you know. I was, like, fixing my computer by myself. I started, like, programming a little bit by side, some websites to earn some cash <laughs> to uh, play even more. Pretty cool. And then I went, to, like, into this finance game, crypto game. But in the end, I found out it's all about people. And that's why I kind of got stuck with this HR thing. And at the same time, it's like the biggest problem in Germany. Um, so I'm very happy to continue building this uh, um, yeah, this company crazy. And um, yeah, to, to satisfy the need, this huge need and this huge pain in the German marketplace. Crazy. So I think, to be honest, um, it was a quite nice, nice episode about you right now. I think we're going to cut it so far because we have 28 more days to speak about 
everything that we ever done and all about the goals. And I think we had a pretty nice conversation, which I never had this kind of, I swear I never had this kind of conversation with you because normally normally we <laughs> speak all the possible shit yeah, yeah, it's with each other. But I really, that was like a really genuine, very nice conversation where I also learned a lot of things about you and about the, the stuff that you do. So, um, yeah, guys, I have, please let us know in the comments what did you thought about this um, uh, this chat between us. And stay tuned. Subscribe and click the bell button and wait for the next episode. Cheers. Wait a minute. This, this is how you did it. it. <laughs>